Series from Houston, Texas, Tech in North America. My name is Jeremy Chapman. Hi, and I'm at man Richard Desariga. Right, good to see you here again, Richard. So today we've got a really special show in store. We're going to talk about all the new stuff that's in the apps for Office model. Absolutely. We've done a lot of love to apps in the past. We've looked at Office apps, SharePoint apps. This is about what's new. Right, so all of this we're going to cover in the next 10 or 15 minutes. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia question. Which of the following is not an app enhancement in SP1? Is it A, B, C, or D? So Richard, we've made a lot of changes in terms of the app model because the cool thing with the app model itself as, as with the rest of Office 365 is we can keep changing that. That's right. You know, before we jump right into what's new with SP1 and what we're doing with the app model, it takes a, you know, it would be nice to maybe look and see why we're doing apps. What's better about this approach than our traditional way of doing things? So let's maybe look at this broken across maybe three different pillars. So I'm going to look at this across footprint, the discoverability of apps, and then the actual platform that you build these on. Okay. So if we look at footprint, first of all, the traditional do way of doing development with maybe com plugins to Office was I ended up having to create these assemblies, DLLs, and actually install those side by side with Office. They actually would share the same processes. They'd a lot of times share the same DLLs and it ended up being problematic from a lot of standpoints. So how many people here have maybe seen customers who couldn't upgrade to the latest version of Office because they had some plugin that they you know, used to do their work? Saw several smirks in the audience there. In the app approach, the only thing that gets installed on a user's machine is a little XML file that just says, here's where the app lives and here's how I use it. And in an evergreen service like Office 365, we need something where we can constantly push updates and not worry about some sort of plugin that's installed on the machine. Right, it even goes further than that, right, in terms of discoverability, because I know there's a lot of cool changes there. If you are a developer writing apps, there's good news here too, right? That's right, so if you built a really cool Office plugin in the past, how did you get it out there for people to find? I mean, you could put it on maybe your website, but that was maybe not, didn't have the reach that Microsoft has with some of our websites. So one of the things that we've done is we've made a public marketplace available for all of these apps. You can go out to the Office Store, you can find fantastic applications. Many of them are free, some of those are you know, a small price, but great things that I can get. There's also a private catalog, so corporations can actually build these apps very easily and be able to make those available so other people within the organization can see those. But even beyond that, we've gotten a lot better in terms of, uh, in terms of beyond discovery and footprint, right? That's right. How many developers do we have out here? Awesome. Well, I don't, know what you like, yes. I don't know what you like to develop in, but if I look at my choices here of doing VSTO, VBA, and macros versus using you know, web standards, really anything that can render web, I think I'd prefer the, the latter. And it's a lot easier to find people these days, at least in terms of getting people with skills in JavaScript, HTML, and web dev versus finding people that are writing still COM and VSTO and the older browser helper objects, whatever they were using to, to extend Office, right? That's right. In fact, let's validate that. So what I did is I pulled some data from a lot of open source sites where you can go and maybe post different projects. And this is going to maybe just look at the trend of development uh, platforms over years. So what I'm going to do is maybe just drag out platform here and let's look at this across maybe com and let's do JavaScript. And so, um, and, and actually let me look at this by year as well. So here we have JavaScript versus com. We can kind of see a little bit of trend here and I'll actually draw on this to make it a little bit easier to read. And you can see quite obviously that we've had a pretty dramatic decline in com. In fact, at this point in time, really no one's zero. doing that. Yes. And, and JavaScript has just had this huge insurgence in the last few years. All these great libraries that we can work with. So definitely the place to be on and the website. Hold on, you were showing something pretty cool here because you're actually using an app in PowerPoint. This is kind of new too. Are you giving away something? Well, actually, this is my selfish way of actually introducing one of the top five new things we have for the app model with SP1. This is a PowerPoint content app. 
So what you're looking at is web content embedded in PowerPoint, but it's very richly integrated. And it gives me the ability to have these really neat interactions and really elevate presentations. So this is one of the great things we're going to look at in our top five list. Right, so we're giving away one of the top five, but as we're doing the top five, why don't you go ahead and take a seat here. I'm going to drive the PPI and take us through the top five brand new features for Apps for Office. So why don't we go ahead and get started with our top five list, as we like to do here on the garage. Top tens, and this time top five in terms of the apps. Do you want to show some of the actual authoring of applications happen with Richard in his demo position? So let's start out with number five. Content apps for PowerPoint. We saw one of them, but why don't you explain how those works and how, how to actually build one? That's right. So we saw one on the, the PPI. I'm going to show you how easy it is to add it to PowerPoint and use one of these applications. So I'm just going to open up PowerPoint here on my computer. And um, I'm going to open up a, a deck that I already have that's not too, you know, it's nothing fancy. I don't even have a nice template in here. Um, but what you can see is I have a very easy way of adding these applications. I can simply go to my Insert tab and go to My Apps. And what I can see is I can find different applications that have been presented to me. So this is actually privately distributed apps. So you could think of this as my, my IT organization delivering these for me. So I'm going to grab an app here that I have called the Yammer Embed app, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my PowerPoint presentation. Now, this is a web window, so you might be thinking, well, it's going to always look like a, a, you know, maybe an iframe inside my PowerPoint presentation, but that's actually not the case. We actually do quite a bit to help you do things like styling. So what I want to show you here really quickly, I'll just apply a theme to this, so I can go up to design, and I can pick any of the pre-canned themes, and what you'll see is as soon as I change my theme, the, the same coloring and theming gets applied to my app itself. So I can toggle between different views, and my app will actually get the same type of view. And we did see, we did see the first one here running on the PPI. So That's that right. one was fully cached, fully loaded, ready to run. Let's move on to our next number four. Our number four is new Excel APIs for formatting. So take it away, Richard. That's right. So you know, Excel is one of those places that really there's tons of plugins. Lots of people have Excel plugins. The problem was is I couldn't do anything around formatting. So this is my normal experience that I'd have in an Excel plugin. I'd go launch, um, I'd launch Excel, my app, my app would launch, and I could interact with the, the worksheet. So we'll go in here. This is a simple application that allows me to do some stock quote lookup. So we'll look up and see how Microsoft is doing today. And you can see that it was able to go insert that into our um, Excel app. Now, our Excel worksheet. In this case, um, it looks like Microsoft's a little bit down today. It would have been nice if I could actually color code that appro appropriately. So the great thing is we've extended the APIs that allow me to build these type of applications. You'll notice that I'm working in JavaScript here. That's, again, I can use you know, any sort of web technology to build these. So what I'm going to do is simply uncomment four lines of code that is going to help me do my formatting. And we'll run our application again. Here, I'm going to be able to now, again, tie into certain stock quotes. But hopefully, um, we'll actually see some live formatting as well. So our app loads, we'll go ahead and enter in MSFT. Get a stock quote. You can see that it's actually color coded at red. And I can add additional stocks. And for each one of those, it will go check and see how it's doing today, performing and format accordingly. Right, so the net new aspect of this is the coloring that we're able to see there, because beyond just be able, being able to put in the vanilla web services content for the Microsoft quote, or you've got Exxon Mobil quote there, you can actually use conditional formatting. Part of Excel, part of what was introduced in 2010 as part of this API set. So That's let's right. go on to our next top five list item number three. Content apps for access. One of my favorites as a former access developer Show us what's new in Access. Yeah, this is pretty cool. This is actually taking an Office app and putting it in Access. And Access, in a sense, is kind of an app in itself. So it's kind of like an app in an app. So let me show you this here. This is actually a really good out-of-the-box example of binding to data in Excel. And you might be wondering, well, why are you showing me in Excel? I thought this was Access. Right. The cool thing about this, this is showing one of the reasons why we're going with web standards and not making it so tied into one Office product. As I build this application, I'm going to be able to use it inside of something like Excel. Um, so I'll just insert some sample data here. And you can see that it inserts it, and then it binds it to a chart. Now as I add more data in here, I'll add Richard. 
and maybe give Richard a grade of 100, you can see that it automatically correlates that inside of that chart. The great thing is with zero code changes, without doing anything, I didn't have to do anything special. I can actually take this now and insert it into an Access app. So I'll go out to my SharePoint site here, and I've created a really quick little student Access app. And so this is similar to what we saw in terms of data in that Excel workbook. It's going to list me a bunch of students and their grades. And as I go through and I select the different students, I can see their picture, I can see their grade. But what I'd really like to see is how they stack rank in, uh, across the entire class. So here's what's new with SP1. I can come up here and I can now add an app for Office inside of this Access app. So I'll go ahead and load this here. And what we'll see is one of my options is going to be that class rank app that we just created. So I'll go ahead and select this class rank or class rank chart app. And we'll see it immediately show up inside of our browser. So it'll show up down here at the bottom. Now we need to bind it to our table. But all that takes is a couple of quick clicks. So we'll do that here really quickly. I can identify what I want to show as the name. And I can identify what I want to show as the grade. And then when I say OK, it's going to go bind our chart against that. As I select different students, you can see it changes the color. Um, I can resize this so I don't get those scroll bars. I can make it look like it's definitely a part of the page and have a great experience for our Excel Access users. All right, so even beyond that, we've got another one of our top five list, number two. Mail APIs for body and attachments, because I think you're going to have some messages to post about mail things in a minute, at least. But let's see what you've got from a mail API standpoint. That's right. So we introduced mail apps in 2013. It was a great way to really extend the mail experience. So what's great about mail apps is they were contextual. A user doesn't have to do anything to add the mail app. They, it basically automatically looks at the mail and says, hey, I, I, this, map, this app is relevant to this piece of mail. So what you're seeing here is this is actually a great app that one of our independent software vendors built in our app model. So I have this Harmon IE app, and the reason it's being displayed here is because I have an attachment. So it's looking for attachments. And so when I, when I launch this application, what it's going to do is give me the ability to go and maybe do something with it. So the app's going to load. It sees the attachment. And I can go specify that, you know what, maybe I want to go stick it to, out to my OneDrive site. Right. So I'm going to stick this out in my OneDrive for Business site. And you might say, well, couldn't you do like a site mailbox? Well, that doesn't really make sense for OneDrive sites, because that would be two email addresses for every user. So I'm simply going to select my site here. And then I'm going to specify exactly where I want it to go, the document library folder. And I'm going to say save to this location. So this is in the process of uploading. And if I refresh my site here, what you'll see is hopefully that attachment will show up here in my first refresh. And the great thing about these mail apps, there it is right there, is that they can be consumed not only in a, in a Windows machine in a browser, but also on a Mac and also an OA for iPad, the forthcoming or the upcoming OA for Android, and also OA for iPhone. All of those are basically consuming OA <coughs> HTML content at the core, so they can use these apps too. That's right. Really works cross-platform by being web-based. Right. So beyond this, though, we have another treat for those of you. Anybody use email out there? It's one or two people. All right. Everybody else is using Yammer, I suppose. Number one, compose mail apps. So we do some really cool stuff here in terms of being able to pre-write mail content that you're sending out. And Richard's got a great demonstration about how I can use this to help a help desk. Anybody work with a help desk? Directly or indirectly? All right, a lot of you. OK, so let's, let's have a look. So I actually have a SharePoint app that is a help desk. Um, and, and you can see it here. I have a number of help desk alerts. And I can actually go into the help desk, which is, again, it's, a, it's an app for SharePoint. has lots of great content in it. But you know, maybe I'm a help desk engineer on the go, and I notice a lot of emails coming in about something in our network. And I want to post maybe an alert to let people know that we're experiencing some technical difficulties. So, I'm going to actually do this from Outlook. Now, I'm in, I'm in OWA here, but this also works in the Outlook client. But what I'm going to do is come over here and compose a new piece of mail. And here's what's new in SP1, is I have the ability to go and say, new help desk app. So I'm going to select that, and I'll just give it a title. I'll say, network issues. I'll give it a category. I'll give it a description, a location of Houston. And we'll say it affects 1,200 of my best friends here at TechEd. And I'll go ahead and say, OK, 
What, what it does is it not only creates that alert in our help desk system, back in a line of business system, it also authored a really nice HTML email that I can now send out to my employees so that they can see um, that, that notification. Wow, that's really cool stuff. So all of this is all part of what we've done in terms of SP1 updates alone to the app model. So something that's developing itself in terms of what developers can use from, a, from an application perspective with Office 365 across the entire stack for SharePoint, for Exchange, and for your Office clients. Now before we wrap up today's show, let's have a look at today's trivia question. Which of the following is not an app enhancement in SP1? Is it A, B, C, or D? C. All right, Word content apps are not there, so that is the correct answer. So Richard, you showed us a lot of great stuff in terms of the developments around the apps for Office and SP1 and that time frame and, and beyond. Thank you. Any other things coming up soon that you know of? We're doubling down on the app model, so keep tuned. Everything is moving to the app model. That's the important part. So everything and more can be found at the blogs at office.com blog site, all of our news. Also follow us at Office Garage on Twitter. Thank you everybody for watching and goodbye for now.